What's going on? <laughs> 18 and I'm standing tall as I can with all weight on my toes. I said 18 and I'm standing tall as I can with all weight on these toes. In a month, in a month I will see my grandfather who will seem like this first time. In a month, the events that will soon unfold bring me to think of the many months my grandfather spent walking. Walking when I grow up would leave a thousand miles, all because of love, because it was the only love he knew of, even if it was pennies for backbreaking labor, because it was a home, because it was, it kept us from the dirt of the streets, and at the very least, this was food, and this was drink, and so heroically, my grandfather, he made a choice of sweating his eyes by so that his sons and daughters could survive comfortably, sweating his eyes by so that his sons and daughters and their daughters and sons can carry on a name, and carry on forever memories of the his examples, his examples, my grandfather's examples. So in a month, I too will be walking. I'll be walking towards something, for something. But in a month, not a thousand miles, and not under a desert sun that bakes fireplaces to a burn. In a month, I will be graduating from high school, going somewhere for something, they say. But it's the start of summer that gets me stuck, stop for with immobile, not moving physically. I become an 18 year old statue for decision, and I can't explain it, but it feels like I'm dying. I can feel the kid in me that I never let die, now die, fighting to defeat all responsibility. When my mind runs marathons from dreams to nightmares and lists them in depth of their possibilities. And all of this, which brings me to think. I'm 27, and I'm standing before a classroom, and I can't help but see the mirrors of those I've been and those I wouldn't have the strength to be. Student A. A sister turned mother since she had no choice but to step up to raise a family. And since a family doesn't raise itself without hands. Hands to make dinners and tuck brothers and sisters in a bed. Hands for checking homework. Hands to hold on a hope that really just fills your fingers and your palms with air. Student B, a grandson. He's hiding his talents to save himself from pain and spare others from taking away his one escape because they made him just a skill at guarding opportunities by holding back with maybes. And this I fear for him, since maybe star nevers overnight, and then student C. Student C just wants to be loved again, and a part of the family equally. Even if she's gay, she's strong, she's different, and she'll make strong choices, and won't stop committing herself from being a longer love and nothing. All of which brings me to think. So at 18, and I'm standing with all weight on my toes, and I'm fighting to forget what's been and take out of mind what will be. I'm fighting this gravity, this family history, this possibility, this society's definition of me, and just another team carrying the pretense that I can change this world. And I think, 27, and I'm standing before the classroom, and the highlight of my school day is seeing them enter with words. Words, part of them packed with their voice. Something they call their own, like a message in a story. Standardless, boundless, beautiful, unbreakable. Words connected to something larger than life. Something complex we call greatness, but still bigger than this. And this is what I hear daily. And this is what brings me to think and wish that out of all of this, something invaluable, something related to where you and where you'll be will stick like concrete layers of love, all to be finally dried over with pride that's now a rocky stone, never to be broken down, and all in all remain as a foundation to strong on a fortress against an armies of wrongs and stand like a statue staring. What I mean to say is, anything and everything built of pride and love lived lifetimes will stand against time if you just let it to do so. Good job.